Take time sizing them up. Not against Bernard Hopkins. He started fast in that fight. He started fast again against Pascal in his last fight. In short order, Sergey Kovalev and John David Jackson have established themselves as one of the most identifiable fighter trainer pairings in the sport. But the memories of those fights under Sanchez's guidance, those eight fights, and what Kovalev views as an unamicable split with his former trainer have emerged as a powerful motivational force going into tonight's title defense. Abel said and still to say about me a lot of wrong things. I know, I know why, I understand why, because I right now not in his boxer. From Sergey's point of view, you know, Abel was like a drill sergeant. It was my way or the highway. They just, they just clapped. So, you know, I don't know what the, the bottom line between Abel was, why they couldn't really get together. For Sergey, he carries a chip on his shoulder because this guy kicked him out of his gym and told me he's going to be nothing. Now he's become, you know, if I were a champion, he wants to prove to him I'm better than you thought I was ever going to be. My guy told my sister, the best way to show him is beat this fighter up, beat him. I said, literally destroy him, beat him down, break him down real nice. I don't try to knock him out the first round. I said, now, every now and then, just wink at, look, look at Abel and wink at him. Mess with him mentally, but beat his fighter physically. They are enemies, and I'm gonna kick his ass today. Max Kellerman, John David Jackson says he has a chip on his shoulder. He may be the ultimate chip on the shoulder fighter in the sport right now. What did Don Turner, the great trainer, tell you, Jim? He said that he was the meanest man he'd ever met in boxing, that he was meaner than Sonny Liston in the ring and meaner than Ray Robinson outside the ring. It's a great quote. And it makes for a great knockout action fighter. But Bernard Hopkins, as he showed against you, and then again against John Pascal, when he threw more jabs than power punches, he really is a skilled boxer. Oh, absolutely. He has the skills, he has the ability and the patience. And you know, it shocked me because he's a good mover. Not a runner, but a mover to set up shots. Kovalev's recent dossier, including those spectacular wins over Cleverly and Hopkins and Pascal, and now we'll see if he can score another one against heavy underdog Najib Mohammadi in this mandatory title defense for Kovalev. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, this is the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified light heavyweight championship of the world. It's sanctioned by the IBF, WBA, and WBO, and presented by main events in association with Crusher Promotions. Sponsored by Vodka, Miyakov, and Mr. Osetrov Caviar. Governed by the direction of the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman, Francisco Aguilar, Executive Director, Bob Bennett. The IBF President, Daryl Peoples, WBA President, Hilberto Mendoza, and WBO President, Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Adelaide Bird, Robert Hoyle, and Steve Weisfeld, and the third man in the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee, Kenny Bayless. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters are in the ring and they are ready. So from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner with trainer Abel Sanchez and wearing white with red. Official weight, 173 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 39 victories, including 24 wins by knockout with three defeats. He's the former French and WBA Continental Light Heavyweight Champion and the former WBF Light Heavyweight World Champion, the challenger from Marseille, France, Najib Mohammed. And his opponent 
cornered across the ring, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, John David Jackson, wearing blue and white and officially weighing in at 174, one half pounds. His professional record, unblemished with 27 victories, including 24 KOs and 21 of those knockouts are in three rounds or less. He has one draw in his career and he comes to us from Chelyabinsk. Russia, the reigning and defending, unified, undefeated, universally recognized light heavyweight champion of the world, Sergei Krashikovalev. I the idea fell. Idea fell. Idea fell. Everybody out, 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 out. You want your, you want your belt? Hold on one second. Get the WBO belt. WBO belt. Find that Okay, you good? good. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Trunks are a little high here, so punches that thrown on the upper half will be considered good. Okay. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Conventional right. wisdom coming into this fight is not whether or not Kovalev will win. It's in what round will he knock Mohamedy out? Mohamedy is going to have to do something early to convince Kovalev that he has something to think about here. That was comic in the corner, wasn't it? I mean, I thought we had been over all of the problems that are caused by the multiple title belts in the sport. But that was a new one. Wait a minute, where's the W? Hey, bring the IB, bring the other. Oh, no. What are we supposed to do with the belts? Amazing. Round one begins. Sergey Kovalev, for the first time in his career, in a fight counted by CompuVox, threw more jabs than power shots against Jean Pascal. Many more, as a matter of fact. He's relied more and more on that jab in recent fights to set up the power shots and also to keep opponents back, to create space. And off balance, Jim. Sergey throws that jab. He throws it to put it out there, but he also throws the second and third one in to get his opponent attention. That is Mohamedy. And, and you know, I see Sergey squat is his has been in his knees a little bit, Max and Jim, to get that leverage. Before he used to be a little straight up, but now it seems he got a little bend to him. So a little bit less European and a little bit more American yes. in style? Yes. John David Jackson would teach you that. Obviously. He has a great relationship with John David Jackson. I mean, he's, he was quite adamant in saying to us yesterday, Abel Sanchez didn't teach me anything. There's a big misimpression that Abel Sanchez was my trainer and that I was learning from him. That's not really the case at all. I was just up there at Big Bear. I wasn't really a student of his. And the case with John David Jackson is entirely different. You can workout, see them workout, huddling workout, together and workout. Jackson talking in his ear all the time. And there's a constant flow of communication between Kovalev and John David Jackson. Kovalev hasn't really been able to get his punches on track upstairs, throwing a couple of good right hands to the body. Mohamedy getting in and out, right, touching right, Kovalev right, from right, time right, to right. time. But just before you said that, Max, Sergey hit Mohamed D with a, with a stiff jab and also a body shot, a straight right hand to the kidney. And, uh, you know, he got his attention, Mohamed D. He's, he looked at him like he didn't really care for that shot. Oh, no, 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 no. Kovalev had the enough. kind of power, Bernard, since you faced him, where you feel everything he throws? Just about. Yes, just about. And, and the reason you don't feel the other ones because you're already on the canvas. <laughs> Mohamedy has tried to befuddle Kovalev with movement and some awkward shots here in round one, but basically it's just been business as usual for Sergei Kovalev, who has fired his jab effectively, 
gotten in a right hand or two. And will look to get more aggressive in rounds two and three. This now makes 20 consecutive fights without a first round knockout for one of the premier knockout punchers in boxing. And there is Natalia Kovalev, wife of Sergey Kovalev, sitting next to his manager, Agus Klimas, who's also the manager of Evgeny Gratovich and Vasily Lomachenko. Good round. Keep fainting this guy. Go to the body, okay? He's, he's already scared. So just take your time. Faint him, faint him. Touch that body. Have you go to the hook, do the jab. Bang, come back with the hook. Okay, but set him up. Bang, bang, bang. Make sure, make sure, make sure that we keep the jab in his face or feigning and moving him, okay? Make sure that we make him work, all right? Very important that we make him work. And don't worry about the body for right now, okay? Copy box numbers in round one. Kovalev was 22 out of 57. Very efficient, very good round. Mohamedy, seven out of 30. Kovalev landing 14 jabs and five body shots in that first round. Like Triple G, like Chocolatito, it's not just the power of Kovalev, it's the threat of the power. Um, he has the skills to get that power home, and his opponent is so aware of the threat of the power, it affects his game plan. Oh yeah, Max, I mean, because, you know, you anticipate it because you feel it, you know, the power of Sergey early on. And Mohamed D know that it, this man has power because he felt the body shots and, and he also felt the jab. And this is going to be ruled a slip, not a knockdown. Mohamed was excited. He thought he might have knocked Kovalev down, but he actually stepped on his foot, helping to create the slip that saw Kovalev fly through the air and land on his back. Well, one thing for sure, Jim, Mohamed Deed has a better chance of making a roughhouse fight more than a technical fight because he's ready to get set up with a right hand. Either to the body or to the head, Sergey is lining him up for that fastball. Which is his right hand. And he almost caught him with the left hook right there. Go ahead, Max. Mohamedy has to use that kind of awkward rhythm, herky-jerky, in and out, if he wants to have any success. And you see him trying that here. Lands a right hand, does Mohamedy. Oh, and but that's the problem. right hand. And another right hand. And Mohamedy's in trouble. And down he goes. And he got caught on the temple with a right hand. Five, He's twice six, previously been knocked out seven, that way. Eight. You okay? okay? Looks pretty good as he gets back up, watching Kenny Bayless. And Kovalev's got a minute and 16 oh, to work with. Stop, stop, his stop, legs stop, is really bad, Jim. Max, his legs is really bad. Mohamed D. Mohamed D really don't have his bearings right now, and he's trying to survive. He should be holding. He just got hit with another right hand. Yeah, I mean, Kovalev, you can come don't in push. with the, the best game plan, and you could be a good fighter. He has the kind of punching power to render all that stuff moot. I mean, Mohamed is balance is gone. He looks like he doesn't know where he is. Yeah, Kovalev's got that jack o lantern no, no, grin no, no, no. on his face, which is often the expression you see before the other guy gets counted out. And Kovalev push. came in with a wrestling move push. there. Like a, a, like a WWE move, and bringing the knee know, down Sergei, on Sergei don't Sergei need that. Uh, don't Jim, he don't need that. He need to be professional. He need to work off the jab because he want the fans to love him. He don't want this, the fans to see him as a guy that's going to throw people down when he got him on the ropes. Well, he oh. already had some negative adrenaline coming in, saying he wanted revenge against Abel Sanchez. Now he probably doesn't like Mohamedy all that much. He's got a scrape on his nose, does Kovalev. So there's plenty of incentive for him. As Mohamedy is going to make it out of the okay. second round. Well, I think Mohamedy looks like Sanchez Abel right Time. down in the ring. Okay, that jab was working, but you got to throw a right hand over the top. Okay, he's pulling his head back. You got to throw it. doesn't matter if it lands on it. Just throw it two or three times, all right? Make sure that you throw it. Don't pull back like you're pulling back. That's why you're getting caught. I'm saying you got to stay in there. Yes, sir. You gotta stay. Okay, I got you. All right. Okay. Okay. No rest. Take your time. You're gonna get him. Take your time. Here's Sergey lining up the jab and making Mohammed run right into the right hand. 
And there he goes. Down. And that last right hand was on the temple. Now here's Sogay telling him to get up because now he wants to let him know, get up, he wants to fight, he wants to prove a point. And you know, he said it at the press conference. Well, Jim, you talked about Kovalev's meanness. When he fell on top of Mohamedi, he brought down his knee, it looked like to me, on Mohamedi. On Mohamedi. There he's egging him to get up because he wants to punish him some more. This guy is a mean fighter. Sinister. The most sinister presence in the ring of anyone in boxing. And that grin helps to accentuate it. Enjoys inflicting punishment. Mohamedi has no answer for the left, the right, the overhand right, the chopping right. Again, he has no answer for this. It threatens to become target practice. The only thing that's keeping it from being target practice is Mohamedi's awkwardness. And that's bomb time for a moment. Because, listen, Sergey right now, I feel, right now wants to get some rounds or minutes in, and then he's gonna put the pressure on because right now he knows what he have in front of him, and right now he just wanna make a statement and then take him out. He's lining him up for that right hand, Jim. Yep. how Abel Sanchez talking to Mohamedi between rounds didn't even mention or acknowledge the knockdown. Just went to the latter part of the round immediately and talked about what Mohamedi ought to do offensively. Trying to get his fighter past the bad moment. Mohamedi has a really great chance letting this fight go a little longer than what people expect. Why? Because he's taking those subtle movements to the left, to the right. He cannot stand in front of Sergey and think he's going to have a shootout with him. Sergey doesn't look desperate to end things. Uh -huh. Like he wants to prolong it a little bit, as we were discussing earlier. Well, with what Mohamedi is doing, he may be able Bernard says to extend it, although maybe not now. Looks like it just broke Mohamedi's nose. And it Six, looks like Mohamedi may be done. Seven, yeah, I don't think he'll get up from this. Nine. Well, he's going to try to. Uh, but Kenny Bayless is going to say no more. Third round knockout. He had another KO victory for Sergey Kovalev. And that is knockout number 25 in 29 fights. He's one of boxing's destroyers. So, Bernard, I guess Kovalev perfectly targeted Mohamedi's left eye. Left eye, nose, he targeted right there with the straight right hand. Looked like he's broken, Jim. I mean, he hit him with a straight, straight right hand, and he lined him up with that even earlier, but now he just settled in, he's seen his shot, he carried him for a round, and then he executed it. Mohamedi still acting as though either the orbital bone around the eye or the nose is broken. Who knows? Maybe both. Well, he's been walking into those straight right hands. Now let's take a look at it now, Bernard. And here we go right now. Sergey right now taking a half a step back, and here's the lead right hand, straight, cheap bone, then a left hand down uh, to the left side of the jaw. That was it. That was it right there. Maybe his nose is broken, Jim, but that was the right hand at first, and now you got a left right on top of that. So yeah. Looked that like left the, side look, took a big beating for those like the two left punches. the damage, actually. Absolutely. It's set, it, it set, up, it set up for the knockdown or knockout. Well, we saw Sergey Kovalev knock out Cedric Agnew with a jab to the body. And we've seen him knock down other fighters with a jab. And there's wife Natalia's reaction. Baby Alexander is at home, will be one year old in October. And dad has yet another knockout win. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on the KO. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, 
The official time is two minutes, 38 seconds of round number three. The winner by knockout victory and still the undefeated light heavyweight champion of the world, the light heavyweight fighting pride of Chelyabinsk, Russia, Sergei Krashenkov! Box final numbers, total punches. Kovalev lands 50 more, throws 74 more, lands at a significantly higher percentage, completely dominates the fight. Landing 35 power shots, including the last two, which apparently have done some structural damage to Najib Mohammadi's face. Close to 50% power punches landed by Sergei Kovalev. And then Max Kellerman stands by with the three belt champion of the light heavyweight division. Congratulations, Sergey, as usual. Another spectacular knockout. What's your feeling on your performance tonight? Uh, I feel as a sparring today. It's, uh, it's for me a very important fight, was it? And I'm very happy that I got the victory in my record and uh, save my bells. IBF defense today was because he was mandatory first, uh, rank it number first, and I I'm happy. Come on. Um, you mentioned before the fight that you, this is sort of a revenge fight for you, considering it was an Abel yes. Sanchez fighter. Got the gloves off. When you knocked him down, you motioned for him to get up like you wanted to punish him some more. Why did you do that? Yeah, I, I call him a stand up and it's like a short show. People know, didn't see uh, boxing. Just a one round, it's a it's, it's, it's small, small fight. And I wanted to continue and I tried to continue uh, longer this fight to make this longer fight, but uh, it happened what, ha what was happened. Well, a guy who gave, you a good, gave everyone a good show was Jean Pascal. He won tonight. But ringside, we thought his opponent may have won the fight. Did you get to see that fight? Um, I didn't see this fight. I just a little bit, uh, like maybe one, one, two rounds in the dressing room. And uh, it was an interesting fight. And uh, I, my opinion that uh, when, when I saw it's like uh, uh, Gonzalez was uh, much better. Are you interested in a rematch with Pascal? Or would you rather fight Gonzalez? You know, if, if uh, people interested in the rematch, ready. Ready for any fight, you know. It's, uh, it's boxing, it's sports, first of all, you know. I don't choose, uh, 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 this guy, guy won the fight, this, uh, no one, I'm, like, I'm ready for everyone. Well, the biggest fight that could be made in the division, other than you and Adonis Stevenson, and it may be a bigger fight for boxing anyway, would eventually be you and Andre Ward. It's being discussed for next year. What are your thoughts about fighting Andre Ward in the next couple of fights? Max, I can repeat, I, I get, I'm ready for any fighter, any fights, any opponent. It's, it's boxing, it's sport. First of all, for me, it's sport. And if uh, fans uh, want to see this fight, like, and uh, promoters will make this fight, I'll be happy. So will we. Thanks, champ. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Max, uh, yeah. let, let me congrats my father with uh, his birthday. Uh, Papa, поздравляю тебя с наступающим днем рождения. Передаю тебе огромный привет также своей маме, uh, всем друзьям Челябинску. Челяба, я вас всех люблю. Спасибо за поддержку и вообще всей России. Я люблю вас, мои дорогие друзья. Спасибо. Happy birthday, Papa Kovalev. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Longest streak of Russian we've heard on the air here in quite a while. Bernard Hopkins, uh, interesting night. Pascal manages to get past Unieski Gonzalez in a fight that we thought Gonzalez won. Kovalev completely dominates Mohammadi, as most people expected. If, in fact, we go forward to a Pascal versus Kovalev rematch, does John have any better chance the second time around than he had the first time around? <laughs> Jim, I, from what I've seen from J John Pascal tonight, I don't see what he's going to do different right. uh, when they fight again. I'm more interested in seeing what's next after that, if that fight takes place um, with Sergey Kovalev. Because, you know, whether he fights Stevenson or not, uh, 
it's going to be some great fights made, whether 68 Ward move well, up or Andre maybe Andre Ward is a tremendous fight. It's a tremendous fight. Made. And, you know, they, I heard talking about Triple G moving up sometimes, and that's, that's a big fight. But no matter what, 